to match Susie Lisby. <laughs> Does not till later that his meaning was made clear. Susie and I started off on Irish whiskey. And after the third, the conversation took an intimate turn. We discussed her situation on the home front. The brother, it appeared, had announced the date of his marriage. It was to be soon, less than six weeks. I suppose, I said, with calculated carelessness, that if a fellow was to propose, you might not say no. That, said she, would depend on who the fellow was. Well, uh, suppose it was me, I said. Oh, I'd marry you all right, she answered after a while. But I couldn't leave down my regular clients. I took a quick swallow with me and pretended I hadn't heard. Would that soof? she asked after another while. I could not believe my ears. Uh, what sort of woman can I expect at my age? She would have to be flawed as I am. A minor flaw I would not mind. But Oozy Susie loves mankind. Brady and I have decided to stay at the Royal Brigade Hotel during the spring show. It was he who selected it. I don't know what the rates are, but since it is I who will have to pay the bill, I have no doubt that it is the most expensive available. As ever, your old pal, John Bosco McLean. Tobagon Barn House, Tobagon Barn. Dear Frank, we booked into the Royal Brigade at 10 o'clock, and from then on, it was a non-stop jumble of unrelieved boozing. I had the most extraordinary time. A conglomeration of tragedy, comedy, farce, and burlesque. Towards midday, we had lunch in the restaurant, and after an inspection of the grounds, we adjourned to the bar and surveyed the scene. Nearby, there were two ladies talking loudly about show jumping. The ladies turned out to be Mrs. Evelyn Person and Mrs. Joy Berry. During the conversation, it was revealed that Mrs. Person was a widow and that Mrs. Berry was separated from her husband. Of the two, Mrs. Berry was the more attractive. Somehow, I found myself partnered with Mrs. Person. At about 10 o'clock, Mrs. Berry and Brady had vanished from the scene. Neither Evelyn nor I had the faintest idea where they might have gone. I was stunned when my companion turned to me and suggested that we withdraw. In her bedroom she turned on the radio and at once the strains of a string quartet set the atmosphere for a romantic interlude. We danced cheek to cheek and on our second time round the room I kissed her gently on the brow. She responded by pressing her body against mine. Get your clothes off. She whispered, I won't be gone long. And so saying, she entered the bathroom. I stood dumbfounded for a moment. But then, I stripped to my pelt, as I'd been told. Suddenly, there was a shaft of light behind me. She stood there, smiling, bulging and roseate, tender and inviting. The moisture glow glinting on her face. She extended her open arms towards me time had at last come. I was about to rise when there sounded on the bedroom door the most thunderous knocking I've ever heard. My lines were open. Outside the porter would stretch. I'm about to go out any minute. He knocked on the next door with all his arm whistled past me and cursed it was my partner in the good risk. Snatching my trousers, I followed suit. After <laughs> landing. Outside a large contingent of onlookers had gathered. I distinctly heard the voice of Sylvester Brady above all the others. I in the middle of the to put on my trousers. And some stuff of a motor car applauding wildly. Give me a straight answer. Ask you now. Ask the question, <laughs> he said with a deep laugh. Well, was it you who rang the hotel and told them that there was a bomb about to go off? <laughs> uh, yes, he said after a while. I hope it didn't inconvenience you. <laughs> 
That is a sport, I think. Oh, I'm sure the spring show. I have a notion of changing through a crisis what the outcome will be. Say John McLean. Spiders well, Ballybarra. My lovely decent boy. I hear you are at the spring show with Mr. Brady. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Tis a place I was never in is Dublin. I hear they have great spuds there. Pure balls of flour by all accounts. I have a lady for you. She's nice and firm. It's fair to tell you that she has the false teeth upper and lower. But this don't take from her. Daisy is a decent girl. Never had a harness on her, I swear. Not like more of them that was over the course a hundred times. I can have her planked at the hotel this coming Sunday night if you are still inclined towards the twosome way of life. Otherwise, court ability times for a dick dicky. Knackers Crescent, Banna Bean. Dear John Bosco, why the coolness? Is it over the bombs? Listen to what I have lined. There are identical twins. Arms here at Banna Bean. I told them I had a pal and they agreed to for a park or someplace. I'd expect you one. I'll have them ready and waiting. Quiet, Sylvie. Tobagon Barn House, Tobagon Barn. Dear Sylvester, I won't be coming in on Saturday night. It has nothing to do with the bomb scare and it's nothing personal to do. With the sake the moment, right? I'm going to pause. You won't be seeing me for some time. Sincerely, John Barn. Tobagon Barn House, Tobagon Barn. Dear Dicky McDicky, enclosed please find my check for fifty pounds in part recompense for the efforts you have made on my behalf. I will be unable for personal reasons to be present at the hotel on Sunday night. In fact, I will no longer need your services. Sincerely, John Bosco McLean. Tobagon Barn House, Tobagon Barn. Dear Frank, you are the only person to know what I am now about to reveal, and I would ask you to keep silent till certain arrangements have been made. I have decided to join a religious order. Well, I have the matriculation from our school days, and with five or six years study, I would have no difficulty in being ordained a priest. Now, do not look upon this proposed action as a retreat from the fray. Rather, look upon it as the entry into a new life. I have dreamed all my life of fair women. I have suffered many an agony in my lonely bed, conjuring up impossible encounters. I went to see Father Kimberley. Well, Father, I said, I have a notion of entering holy orders. <laughs> as long as it remains a notion, we'll be all right. All he did was strengthen my resolve. I am determined to quit this awful, bloody world and Find happiness in holy surroundings, where there is neither mockery nor scorn, where brother loves brother, and all love God. Pray for me, your old pal, John Bosco. Ballycolleen, County Dublin. Dear John Bosco, go off it for a few weeks. Better still, join the Alcoholics Anonymous. You can come here if you want to, and rest up. Your old schoolmate, Frank O'Dell. Tobagon Barn House, Tobagon Barn. Dear Frank, damn it and blasted man, I haven't had a drink since the spring show. I am not the first man to be blessed with a late vocation. My priesthood will bring me immunity from the wicked wiles of the opposite sex. I am travelling the right road at last. As ever, your old pal, John Bosco McLean. Spiders well, Ballybarra. Dear Mr. McLean, These few lines I write in order to say goodbye to you and to tell you that I found you an honourable and decent sort of a man that deserves the best. 
Tis like anything, isn't it? When you leave a thing go too late, you can't expect too much. Tis like the dinner in a hotel. If you come lashed, you'll get the bottom of the pot. Every tide washes up something new, but we'll say no more. Courtesy and civility assured at all times. Your obedient servant, Dicky McDicky O'Connor. Tubbergon Barn House, Tubbergon Barn. Dear Frank, only last night I revisited Tubbergon Barn Dance Hall. The band consisted of three aged musicians from some distant town. They looked downright feeble, and the oldest of the three, who was a drummer, was barely able to lift his drumsticks. I was astonished to see none other than your friend and mine, the Duke of Bannabeen himself, His Grace Sylvester Brady. At his side, knitting some sort of woolen garment was Eva Kishak. Under a bright moon, I wended my way homeward. Tragically, I remembered how my whole romantic life had been a totality of downs, unrelieved by a single solitary up. Ah, well, we must carry on regardless. Sincerely, your old schoolmate, John Bosco McLean. The very last letter. And on Monday, we begin our new serial, The Gauk Storm, by Nancy Bryson Morrison.